Hi, my name is Matija Naglic and I'm a technical advisor on innovation within Tenet with focus on modernization of systems used in our control rooms. Today, I will talk about our control room of the future program, in particular about the research and development track and the corresponding roadmap for the next 10 years. Let's take a look of our agenda for today. First, I will introduce Tenet and the control room of the future program. Then we will dive into corresponding R&D roadmap. I will present you our vision that keeps guiding internal developments. Next, I will talk about the scope, development process, and finally about the content of the R&D roadmap document. Please bear with me till the end of this talk, since I will tell you how you can get involved in the program and get access to the public version of the control room of the future R&D roadmap document. Let me first briefly introduce Tenet, the leading European transmission system grid operator. We design, build, maintain and operate the high voltage electricity grid in the Netherlands and large parts of Germany. We transport electricity over a network of more than 23,000 kilometers of high voltage connections to over 42 million end users. We are proud on high availability of our grid and to playing our role in driving the energy transition. Tenet is one of the largest investors in national and international onshore and offshore electricity grids, with projected 10 years investments of 33 billion euros. We expect to have 9.6 gigawatt of installed capacity in the Netherlands offshore wind farms in year 2030 and 9.8 gigawatts of installed wind farm capacity in Germany in year 2025. Based on projected energy scenarios, we expect the typical systems and tools used today in our control rooms to operate the power system will become insufficient in the future. To timely address these new requirements, we started the control room of the future program to evolve the control room instruments the operators are using to operate the power system. The program is twofold. First part is about replacing of our existing end-of-life approaching EMS CADA system with a new state-of-the-art system of our preferred OSI supplier. First, we will change the systems in Netherlands, following in Germany. Lastly, Second part is about our research and development track, which focuses on, on modernization of existing processes and developing new functionalities that are not part of the new EMS CADA system, but are needed for reliable and secure energy supply. Recently, we consulted Electric Power Research Institute, in particular, the team of Adrian Kelly, with whom we prepared our R&D roadmap to timely advance the existing and develop new functionality. In the next slides, we will focus only on the R&D roadmap on the control room of the future topic. We started with a vision on control room of the future that has guided the development of the R&D roadmap. Let me quickly take you through our vision. The control room of the future, with the operator at its heart, combines the best of human and computer intelligence. Our skilled and valued operators will be supported with the state-of-the-art instruments and technology. An innovative visualization dashboard will give operators a comprehensive performance oversight over the whole power system down to individual network components. This will enable the grid to be utilized to its maximum capacity, safely and securely. In an intuitive human-machine interface with decision support will allow fast response by operators while preventing human errors. To improve accuracy and quality of decisions, the control room processes will be standardized optimized and partly automated. Our highly trained and experienced operators will be able to proactively manage the power system in real time and in seamless coordination with tenant pan-European stakeholders. 
the tools will provide an early warning of potential issues in the link systems and automatically prompt remedial options to the operator. These actions can be performed manually or deployed automatically. In this way, the operator will supervise the automated system and intervene and override the automation with manual control when needed. In case of unexpected service failures and cyber attacks, the system integrated fallback and recovery procedures will in shortest time arrest the degradation and bring the service back to its full operation. All this will help us to improve efficiency, reliability, security and resilience of our power system. One of its kind operations readiness center will host integrated multi-domain simulations to thoroughly train operators of various systems for joint exercises. The Shadow Operations Control Room environment will be also used by the operator for testing pre-production software using realistic models with hardware in the loop capabilities prior to deployment in real-time control room. Based on this vision, we defined the scope of the roadmap. As expected, the primary focus is on real-time processes of the control room. However, we would like to move towards more proactive grid operation, meaning that potential issues are identified and solved well in advance. Therefore, the roadmap also addresses some processes of the operational planning up to D-7 time frame. In other words, some tools which will be developed for the operators of real-time control room will be also used by the colleagues of the operational planning in their back offices. An example of such tool is a congestion management tool in combination with dynamic security assessment. So to develop the roadmap, we took three-step approach. In the first step, in total 45 system residual risks were identified that the operators are dealing with in the control room. Based on performed survey, which was distributed among subject matter experts, the priorities were given to the risks for both countries. This step also identified 35 technologies and methodologies as solutions to address those 45 risks. On the slide, we see an example of congestion, which is the risk with the highest priority to tackle for us. In second step, a maturity trend analysis was performed for each of 35 solutions, where we looked how pillars such as data, software, output, hardware, decision support, and training and testing evolve over the five stages of development. Finally, in third step, few different roadmaps and implementation plans were developed to help us progress between the stages over the next 10 years. Next, I would like to provide you with three more details on the outcome of the just presented process. On this slide, we see only top 17 risks, sorted by priority, that were identified by our subject matter experts and are applicable in both countries. In summary, we see network congestion issues as the highest priority risks, mainly resulting due to increasing transfer of renewable energy over larger regions and facilitation of the cross-border energy markets. Following, we see frequency and voltage stability and faster ramping associated risks. Those are mainly connected with the changes in the energy mix and related to decrease in system inertia due to ongoing decommission of conventional synchronous generation. Interesting to see, lack of grid observability and inaccurate load model data associated system risks 
are also very high on our priority. Next, all 45 identified risks were mapped with existing and to be developed technical solutions in order to monitor, assess and control or mitigate the risks if possible. Here on the slide, we see an example of congestion management, where nine technologies or methodologies were identified as solutions to the risk. For example, among others, a congestion can be mitigated by optimal combination of conventional redispatch, utilization of the grid flexible resources, grid topology reconfiguration to optimize power flows, or by tuning power flow shaping grid components such as phase shifting transformers. In such mapping, one technology or methodology that we are proposing can be used multiple times to mitigate various risks. Finally, for each of 35 technologies and methodologies as proposed solutions, we developed a five-stage maturity trend per pillars such as data, software, hardware, decision support, and testing and training. On this slide, we see an example of why there is a monitoring system. The trend stages progress from 1 to 5, where stage 1 represents the current state, and stage 5, the future advanced state. In brief, in trend stage 1, we have relatively a small number of PMUs installed in the grid. Therefore, our wide area monitoring system can support only a limited set of VAMS applications. Also in stage 1, the VAMS system is independent and not connected to energy, energy management system. In the steps that follow, we install more PMUs in the grid. We also connect VAMS and PMU data with the EMS system, in particular to improve state estimation results and connect VAMS and EMS CADA alarm systems together. In stage 4 and 5, we build full PMU observability of our grid, including neighboring grids. In fifth stage, the VAMS applications are integrated with online dynamic security assessment and decision support tools. Moreover, based on PMU data and state estimation results, we online validate and fine tune our grid model. VAMS is also part of Operator Training Simulator, with the purpose to create a realistic shadow copy of real-time control room for testing of new applications and training of our operators. In the next three slides, I will present the development roadmaps of the proposed 35 solutions and other complementing activities. First, Let's take a look on how high-level development of different pillars is envisioned that will bring us from the current state, where operators control independent technologies, towards the future state, where operators evolve into supervisors of autonomous systems. On top of the picture, we see different time frames and related maturity trends as stages progress from 1 to 5, where stage 1 represents the current stage and stage 5 advanced future state. Let's now briefly look into the first two data and software pillars. In stage 1, we see dispersed data, models and independent systems and data silos. In steps 2 and 3, we would like to move towards consolidated models and interconnected systems that exchange information between them. Here, we aim for user-friendly data access and one source of truth for grid model using a centralized configuration and network model manager. In stage 4, we aim to automatically validate grid models and enable look-ahead capability where we identify issues and solutions ahead of time. Ultimately, in stage 5, we want to develop a digital twin suitable grid models and autonomous systems.
where operators are asked to intervene and override the automation when necessary. From the hardware point of view, we would like to improve observability of the grid, in particular the dynamic phenomena, by using phaser measurement units. In second stage, we aim to utilize the digital substation process bus benefits. In stage 3, we would like to extend the PMU observability to pan-European grid. In stage 4, we aim to utilize behind-the-edge sensor devices. Ultimately, in stage 5, we are looking to move the current centralized intelligence towards the grid edges to ease OT requirements of either a telecommunication network and improve resiliency by using self-organizing agents. Regarding decision support and output of the tools, we would like to move towards consolidated alarms across various systems and standardized human-machine interfaces and control processes of the control room. The ultimate goal is to develop an intelligent decision support as an umbrella over all control room tools. This tool suggests to the operator an optimized combination of multiple actions of various tools to thoroughly address detected issues ahead of time and in real time. Finally, from basic training exercises, we would like to move towards integrated multi-domain simulations to train operators of various systems for joint exercises. The so-called Operations Readiness Center will be used to train TSO, DSO, ICT, Cyber and offshore operators using one simulation. This environment will be also used by the operator for testing pre-production software using realistic models with hardware in the loop capabilities prior to deployment in real-time control room. The next roadmap visualization shows the start moment of all 35 technologies and methodologies, including estimated spend time per each maturity stage up to year 2030 and beyond. Different colors on the horizontal axis correspond to estimated time we need to progress from one stage to another. We can notice that different developments start at different moments in time. This is because the developments are sometimes interdependent or are less critical to us. Obviously, we also cannot start with all activities at once. Some technologies and methodologies which are displayed here are existing, meaning that we have already running activities, but some we need to start from scratch. Finally, the roadmap also proposes additional activities grouped by pillars. Here I'm talking about activities to assess feasibility of certain technologies and to do some preparation work before we start with the main related activity. For example, an assessment of voice control and virtual reality capabilities of our control rooms or development of our dynamic grid model to enable detailed simulations for the purpose of dynamic security assessment. To conclude, the presented R&D roadmap on the control room of the future is serving Tenet as a guideline towards specific functionalities that are needed in the future to reliably operate the grid. Clearly, with internal stakeholders, including operators and subject matter experts, we together investigate the added value and define the detailed requirements and deliverables per each project we start. For example, in the first quarter of this year, we initiated the following projects. First one is about congestion management with look ahead capability, where we plan to make optimal use of conventional redispatch, grid topology reconfiguration, utilization of the flexibility, and control of active components. Next one is about centralized solution for configuration and network model management. Here, we aim to create one source of truth for all the processes that require our grid model. 
The third project is about dynamic security assessment, which will be first used in day ahead, next in intraday, and lastly in real time processes of our control rooms. We are already working on plans to improve our grid observability using PMUs. Fourth project is about grid inertia estimation, both in, both in real time and in near future. And finally, the fifth project is about various forecasts to improve real time and short term grid operations. Finally, I'm glad to announce that we recently prepared a public version of the R&D roadmap on control room of the future. We would like to share our vision, process we took and the development plans with our stakeholders and partners, including suppliers and research institutions. If you would like to make a difference to speed up the energy transition and also participate in control room of the future program, please visit our webpage or get in touch with us via the provided email. With having this said, I would like to end my talk. In case of questions, please shout them out during the next Q&A session that follows, or send us an email.